Belfast city centre reverberates to a new sound created by the world's most powerful rally car, making its UK debut, driven by twice World Rally champion Walter Roll, who's deputising for Hanu Mikola. Well, it does affect us as far as the championship is concerned, and if Walter had to win it, and either Russell or I were second, then we still don't go into the lead, but it still leaves Hanu in the lead. I think that's uh, Audi's way of trying to keep us out of the lead. I'm just here for testing, nothing else. I'm, I'm not very interested what is going on behind me. I just like to see that the new things are working, nothing else. Does that mean you're not going to go flat out? Yes, of course. To, to make a proper test, it means I even go more flat out than normally. I take no care for the car, always, always straight. He wasn't joking either. After a lightning once-over reconnaissance of the special stages that involved checking his pace notes only on the test which will be held in darkness, the new 500 horsepower short wheelbase Quattro is visibly much faster than any rally car ever seen before in the UK. The aggressive new Quattro Sport's a daunting sight. At this stunning pace, water rolls out distancing his nearest pursuers at a rate of no less than 2.3 seconds a mile. By comparison, Audi's principal opposition from Opel looks to be cruising. But Jimmy McRae's car is in fact going absolutely flat out and already locked in a no-quarter struggle with his teammate Russell Brooks. Nothing less than the British Open Championships at stake. Hoping to tie up the Group A struggle on this round is Per Eklund in the class-leading Toyota Corolla. But he's destined for an early retirement with engine failure. Meantime, McRae's teammate, Russell Brooks, has a brand new 280 horsepower Opel Manta 400 at his disposal this weekend. It's said to be the lightest of its type ever built, and he's putting it to good use. After two stages, Russell's in second place, just four scant seconds ahead of McRae. The battle between the Opals looks like being tougher than ever before. With a rebuilt transmission following its failure at the Donegal rally recently, Malcolm Wilson's Audi Quattro is already struggling to stay in touch. But the first retirement is Harold DeMuth's Audi Sport UK car, which manages just six competitive miles before being sidelined with an electrical fire. Local favourite is Irish tarmac specialist Bertie Fisher in his Opel Manta. After an indifferent season to date, he's looking for a good result here and now lies third after overshooting a junction on the second stage. Behind him comes Irish folk hero and this year's Circuit of Ireland winner, Billy Coleman. But already he's experiencing difficulties with his Opal's brakes. Battling with a sticking throttle is young Ian Tilk in his Escort RS. After a number of very promising showings this year, he certainly deserves a good result in Ulster. Mark Lovell's Citroen Visa is also short of brakes, so it's going to be a long night for some as the cars head north into the darkness. A grey overcast dawn in Oma. 13 stages completed, and Walter Roll has increased his lead to 3 minutes 9 seconds, but Bertie Fisher's been in the wars in his Shell Gold car. We were coming down a very fast piece of road, very grippy surface, and uh, the road was damp. Uh, the car braked perfectly, no problem, and uh, when we turned into the junction, it was just shiny, wet tar, and the car aquaplane, we were on slick tires, the car aquaplane just across the road, knocked down about a half a dozen concrete posts and rolled into a field. So uh, we thought it was all over then and we got out and had a look around the car, it didn't look too bad and uh, we got some spectators and he's it out. We lost about something over five minutes probably but it uh, didn't grab us any positions on the overall leaderboard so we've been very lucky I think. While Bertie's now lost any hope of improving on his fourth place, at least by his own efforts, so Walter Roll continues on his remorseless way with the new Audi Quattro Sport. Northern Ireland's being treated to a remarkable demonstration of power and professionalism. Although with a front suspension rather too soft for the job, the Quattro's a major handful over Ulster's bumps and crests. 
Still in second place at half distance, but now just nine seconds ahead of his Scottish teammate after 125 miles of flat-out driving. Britain's Russell Brooks has had a brief electrical failure, which has cost about 20 seconds of stage time and half a minute's road penalties to distract from a truly great dice with Jimmy McRae. Jim was caught out at the same slippery downhill right-hander as Fisher and spun, losing some 25 seconds to Brooks. Now, with the two most competitive Opals bunched closely together once more, the battle for second place is intensifying. Despite all the time lost as a result of his accident, Bertie Fisher is still clinging onto fourth place. Although he's over a minute to play with, the Manta's chassis has been damaged in the crash. It's now understeering badly. With the result, he's being threatened by Cyril Bolton's Vauxhall Chevette. But he too's in trouble, since his disadvantage in power compared to the Opals is being compounded by an overheating engine. his successes earlier this year, Billy Coleman in sixth place isn't enjoying a happy Ulster rally. Despite changing the rear discs, he's still complaining about his car's brakes, but he's nevertheless closing in on Bolton Chevette. Ian Tilk's also having more than his share of problems with a Silkaline Escort, but the plucky Derbyshire driver is still trying hard despite a rear axle that had to be changed, a misfire and sagging oil pressure. He's in seventh place, just 10 seconds ahead of Ken McKinstry's Nissan 240 RS, who's jumping in fine style. It's been a hard night for the Citroen team, who've had to change the rear differential, the rear calipers, and several alternators after Mark Lovell was left without either proper brakes or auxiliary lights. But Lovell's fought back and now holds 10th place. Demonstrating Toyota's dominance of the class, driving splendidly and leading Group A is David Mann's eight-valve Toyota Corolla. John Morton giving chase in his Vauxhall Astra GTE is getting just a touch of understeer. With persistent drizzle now making the roads very slippery, Rolls extending his lead even further, thanks to the Audi's amazing traction. On special stage 25, he's fastest yet again, which makes no less than 18 fastest times to date. Only two more tests remain. The astonishing Opal battle remains a cliffhanger right to the end. Having lost 20 seconds and second place to McRae after an overshoot at a slippery junction on stage 19, Brooks tenaciously claws his way back to lead the Scot by three seconds at the start of the last stage. At the finish, it's the Englishman who gets the verdict by just 10 seconds as McRae slides straight on instead of left at a crossroads swamped by standing water. Both men have given 100% throughout the entire event. Local man Bertie Fisher finishes a distant fourth. No less than 13 minutes, 29 seconds adrift of McRae, such has been the pace of this gripping rally. And after winding himself up to a superb effort on the final stage, in the process setting a time faster than either Brooks or McRae, Billy Coleman just collects fifth place at the finish, demoting Lancastrian Cyril Bolton's Vauxhall Chevette, who'd staved off the Irishman until the last. A spin on the final test seals the matter. Bolton finishes sixth. Running reliably in the later stages after having its engine retimed, Ian Tilt's escort is seventh and Ken McKinstry is just under a minute behind. But there's penultimate stage disappointment for Citroen and Mark Lovell, whose 10th place finish evaporates with a distributor drive failure. Back in Belfast, the superlative Walter Rolls done his job brilliantly. 
after setting 20 fastest stage times and finishing with a winning margin of 4 minutes 15 seconds, he scored Audi's first international win for the hitherto troublesome Quattro Sport.